podcast of West Tigers. Hello and welcome to our second edition, second episode of Behind the Raw, the official podcast of the West Tigers, uh, where we give it to you straight, uh, where we kick speculation into touch. And when we learn more about the stories and the people that make West Tigers the great club that it is. Well, our guest today, this episode, 249 games he's coached West Tigers, 669 NRL games he's coached. 31 times he's coached the Kangaroos, coached Origin as well. He's won four premierships, three with Canberra, and of course, West Tigers maiden premiership in 2005. Welcome to Behind the Raw, Tim Thanks, Sheens. Chris. Thank you, mate. mate. Wonderful to have you on the show uh, a few days out from our very first game against the Titans at Leichhardt. Uh, this is how it works, Tim. I'll take you through how this episode will run. Uh, the whistle blows. Uh, we'll kick things off with the first set of six where I'll ask you six questions just to get to know you a little bit better, all right? Okay. Some personal questions too. Oh, not too personal, I hope, but All anyway, that. I'll do a bit. I'll do a okay. bit. <laughs> now, then we'll get into some nitty-gritty, some key issues around the club and the game um, in the guts of the show. Mm-hmm. And at the back end, um, the clock will stop about five minutes from full time, and we'll go through uh, our favourite five with you. Okay. And I reckon, well, we should get this done well within the hour. All right, okay. All right, well, let's kick things off with our very first set of six here on episode two of uh, Behind the Raw. Brighton's lawyers are the lawyers you know and trust. If you require legal representation, then why look anywhere else? Call Brighton's lawyers on 1800 848 848. Brighton's lawyers, we do support you in your time of need. Uh, A bit more on your background, Tim. So we know you've won three premierships with Canberra and, and the premiership with West Tigers as well. Um, but in terms of your connection with this club, and some people probably don't know this, but there are some strong connections, aren't there? Is it your great uncle played in the, the very first season of Balmain? Yeah, he was um, uh, Joe Regent, uh, a Frenchman, who um, uh, sailed into Balmain, uh, basically lived there, was a rugby union player. Uh, played in 1908 in the very first game, <clears throat> fullback, and uh, and they played the very first game. Of course, was against West. So when I found this out in 2008, yes. which yes. was the centenary of the game, Dave Middleton rang me and said, "Oh, he had a medal for me, which because yeah. uh, I because was I related to Regent." And of course, I've done the family history, and I knew mm. I knew the name. My mother, my mother's um, uh, my mother's mother was a Regent, so. Um, so yeah, I've got photos of him and so on and so on. Uh, played two or three years, I think, with them, and um, as fullback and a bit of lock, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's quite incredible, isn't it? The way the, the, the way it all turns. So again, oh, yeah. and they played against West Tigers. Yes, about nineteen oh eight, and yeah. here you are now going At into the time uh, I was coaching West Tigers as I am now. But yeah, it was uh, it was quite spooky, really, to to, to think that um, you had those you know, you had those roots. You know they. Um, they played down at Birchgrove, and um, yeah. so I've taken the boys down there years years ago. I'll do the same with this group at some stage, and we'll do a session down there. And, and, and we know you played at Penrith, but mm. you're born where Lickham, Strathfield, or where were you? I was born in Lickham. Um, yeah. Funny enough, um, mum and dad lived there, not far from um, where uh, Lickham Oval is, on the other side of the railway line there, in a private hospital thing, and um, born there, but. Um, my dad was from Penrith. My grandfather, all our roots, all our family roots there, the Sheens' roots were from from out at Penrith. So we ended up living out there and grew yeah. up there. Yeah. Now, you're in good shape, if you don't mind me saying, physically, right? It's rude Thanks. to ask a coach's age. Mm. What's the secret, Tim? What's the secret? To, um, you are in very good shape. I've seen you running around out there with the players. Is it healthy lifestyle? <laughs> Is it what? Is it something else? Um yeah, well, I've always trained uh, as a player. Part time, of course, we were. We, you know, we had to work and work and play foot type of football, as I call it. Um, not full time. So um, no, I've been involved in it that many years. I've been playing football. I've been involved with football since I was six years of age. So I suppose you know, if you keep going and 
you're a bit lucky with injury and other things and you look after yourself. Some some players don't. It's, um, I like to do a little bit. I don't do anywhere near what I used to do, but trying to stay a little healthy I think is important from the point of view of you know, keeping your brains mm. thinking and uh, let alone your body operating. Um, but after footy, you know, 13 years in pro fo- in first grade, I had... Uh, I've got knee, shoulder and lots of other issues, but at the end of the day, touch wood, so far no, no reconstructions. You're doing okay. All right, uh, and this is away from footy, okay? So you're having a dinner party. Mm-hmm. You've got three guests you can invite. Who are they? Um, three guests. Um, this will be interesting. That's, a, that's an interesting question. I don't know. I don't know which way I'd go there. Um, our, are, are we talking football? Is it going to be another coach? Is it going to be a player? Uh, is it going to be a musician? Because you like no, the music. If I've got. A, I'm certainly not going to bring in other footballers <laughs> for a for a dinner. Can you imagine the but, chat? Um, I would have said the Queen, but she's passed. God rest her soul. Um, uh, having lived a bit in England, um, mm. but um, no, I don't know. Uh, that's a question. Movie stars, yeah. rock stars, not really? No. Um, well, what, what if you okay? One of the guests has to be a current or former NRL coach, Jack Gibson. God rest his soul. Yeah, yeah. He he helped me as a young coach. Um, he asked me he asked me to play for them in the early eighties, and I knocked him back, and they won uh, three premierships in a row. So that's uh, that was that's one story I've got with him. But in saying that, then Penrith offered me the coaching job. And I might not have done that had I been playing with Parramatta. So, uh, so I end up coaching for the rest of my career. But um, right, Jack's at the table. Yep. And now the other guest, one of the other guests, has to be a player you have coached at representative level or in NRL. One player. Oh, it'd be Roycey Simmons, I think. Good old Roycey. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good mates. Yeah, it was lovely last year too. That the Roy yeah, Simmons Cup yeah, too. Yeah, and. Uh, Hopefully we'll reverse it this year and take it off them. So Royce is there, Jack's there. Yeah, that's a, right. That's no, a no we're gonna, you're going to need you're going to need some light entertainment, Tim. <laughs> a, a musician's got to be there. Uh, Play you some tunes. Uh, Johnny Cash. <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Cash. Um, Elton. Oh hell, this is going to go. On. Elton, there you go. Uh, my All wife right. and I went and watched him. Um, here in Sydney recently, and uh, what a performer! Given his Something. age, his voice is terrific. He, he sat under the under the what was supposed to be a dry area. He got soaking yeah. wet, as did we all uh, at Allianz, and um, was worth every penny we paid for yeah. it. Yeah, so, yeah, unbelievable, isn't it? So there you go, Jack. Royce and Elton. That's a fair. That's a fair dinner party. I don't know what we're going to be talking about, uh, but anyway, um, yeah. Finish the sentence for us, Tim. If I wasn't coaching West Tigers, I would be. Hopefully coaching somewhere else. Born to coach. Oh, well, look, I love it. It's been good to me. Um, you know, I'm getting near retirement. I know that. So, but I'd like to do academy for, you know, I'll end up retiring to England and we'll be living there. So it'll be, you know, get involved with some kids, the academies, that sort of thing. Um just, just for the for the fun of it. To be if you weren't honest. involved in rugby league, what would you be doing? Well, I was a real estate agent initially, so whether or not that's where I where I would have gone, um, I probably would have. I had my own business at Penrith when I was when uh, I was uh, playing there, um, so probably in that sort of a business. Had I not gone into coaching, that's where I would have been. Yeah. All right. Well, the referee's got his hand in the air, so that's five. It's it's the last tackle now. We've got our final question in the set of six, and I think we've thrown a few extras in there actually <laughs> along the way. Righto. Um, you've got an all expenses paid trip, one week holiday, Tim. You can go anywhere you want, okay? And it's been booked for the week after the grand final, so that works out well. Mm. Where are you going? Well, a couple of places, either New York. Um, because, again, my wife and I love that. We've been there a couple of times. Um, or, um, of all places, Alaska. Nice. Somewhere somewhere where there's definitely going to be snow and ice. Um, you know, something that... Um, you like the cold? Yeah, I do. I do. So does, so does Lou. So, uh, yeah, we're keen to... I'm keen to do a bit of bucket, bucket uh, list type things when I retire. So one would be to 
to head to either a, the South Pole or the North Pole or Alaska, I think. That type we'll of have to get you a sleigh, hey? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, just on, uh, on a serious note, I'm though. Not, I'm not going to go tra- tramping to the North Pole. <laughs> you don't just, want a red, red suit? Yeah, you know, a nice, a nice a cruise ship and, you know, take it easy. <laughs> Get off and uh, and uh, and uh, see the seals and the, and whatever. But no, no, somewhere, something where, you know, you, you, you don't normally go. Yeah. You just, just on Lou, and you mentioned mm. Lou, Lou's wife and works here and yeah. um, 24-7 you're together and... and yeah. Very important part of your coaching structure, isn't she, Lou? I mean, yeah, organising you. Yeah, well, I have. I also do the. I'm rugby director still, is part of my role, and uh, of course with the computer and with the organising of those that side of the, of the business, she's excellent. So, she worked here many years ago uh, as well and knows everything about the business. So. It's been a big help to me. It allows me to focus on coaching. All right. Well, there you go. That's the opening set of six, and I think it was a maybe a set of seven or a seven of eight. Yeah, it took us a bit of time, but anyway. Okay, West Tigers fans, show your stripes and get ready to roar with the latest merchandise from the West Tigers Raw Store. From stylish polos to cosy hoodies, we've got everything you need for the 2023 season. With a range of sizes and styles to choose from, you'll find the perfect item to fit your personal style. Whether you're heading to the game or you're just hanging with mates, the West Tigers Raw Store has got you covered. So why wait? Head to the Raw Store today and show your stripes. Let's move on now. Um, some of the you know, big issues around the club, Tim, and uh, y- your coaching structure. Um, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the DNA. Um, I've done some computations with a number of games played by current staff here at the club now. There's lots of stuff I want to sort of get into. Before we do that, a few days out from the very first game now, I mean, how are you feeling? How, how, how well is the squad prepared? As well as we can be. We're still undecided on a couple uh, at this stage um, with uh, small niggly injuries, but in real terms we'll be close to full strength. So. Um, I'm hoping that um, uh, you know we carry the form from that second trial into and the training we've been doing not not just in the last couple of weeks but but also um, the, the the three months or four months that we've really been at it in pre-season they've worked very very hard um, with our best side we looked much stronger obviously in trial two than trial one and um, you know they're a very close knit group um, we work really well together so I'm hoping that we give the fans something to cheer about and come out with a strong performance. Just back, uh, went over to Auckland for the first trial and as yeah. you said, you, you played a lot of younger kids there but you, you more your stronger team played at, at Belmore. Just looking back at that second trial, there were some you know, nice stories there, weren't there? You know, the return of Sean Bloor from yeah. a long-term injury, Twiley yeah. as well, his first game back. Mm. Uh, Tommy Talao was just yeah. his, his second game. David Clemmer, I thought, was immense through the middle and, and Adam Dewey, controlled everything very well. Yeah, he did. Yeah, you've summarised it well, Chris. I think uh, Blory and uh, we talk about all the people we bought, you know, with with Clem and, and Bateman and so on, Happy. But in real terms, uh, Sean Bloor and um, Tommy Talao are, are, are new buys for us. They didn't play a game last year. Um, and that was unfortunate for, for last year's team and, and crew that worked here. But in saying that, I, I welcome them with... You know, and they've certainly shown um, Tommy's had the two. Sean played only the one game, uh, you know, Canberra, but in the minutes that he played, he played really well. So we're hoping to build their time right through the season and touch wood we get a, uh, a good season out of both boys because they're big body, aggressive running, uh, talented first grade players. Just, just on recruitment, um, and... You're right, you've got some big names to the club. And with that, I imagine, comes expectation, added expectation. Yeah. Uh, and clearly you, you've bulked up the forward pack. Was that a strategic decision that, that you were heavily involved in? Certainly, yeah. You, you've got to start there. I think every team will tell you the same in, in, in football, or, you know, in rugby. You've got, to, you've got to have the go forward. You've got to be able to stop their go forward. It all, all starts around the ruck how quick you win the ball, how, how much ground you're making as to whether or not it's a long kick or a, or a shorter attacking kick in, in your sets. So, you know, having a strong forward pack and also having depth 
right through that um, so that, you know, if the inevitable injury or suspension or whatever comes, you're ready to go with, a you know, a good replacement. So we're reasonably good there uh, in our depth. Uh, still got a lot of young guys in the 30, top 30 though. But, you know, the training they've done this year and the couple of games and me taking a few of them to New Zealand obviously has helped uh, mature them and get them comfortable in themselves playing with senior guys. not easy for a young guy to work with the seniors and, you know, boss them around or tell them what to do. Mm. So trying to get that that camaraderie there with the team, that team spirit that you need and that confidence that comes with that. Um, surprisingly, Sean was very, you know, um, was excited but very nervous about coming back yeah, to him. Bet, yeah. yeah, And Tommy the same the week before, so... Just getting that little bit of time under their belt is going to make a big difference oh, to absolutely. us. Absolutely. Yeah. I can only imagine how, or I can't imagine how they were, they were feeling, but mm. it's great to have them back on deck. Just just onto that, that the forward pack and the strength of that, um, Luke Brooks obviously comes into the equation too because if he's playing behind a, a winning forward pack and also with Appy Coruscant, the service he's going to get from him, yeah, you think that could un- unlock Luke Brooks in some way? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, Brooks, he played with Robbie uh, there for a while yeah. and uh, Robbie obviously, um, you know, worked the forwards in their, in their go forward and also the right service to the halves at the right time. Now, when you get two halves, one on the left, one on the right, and they both want the ball, getting, getting the right ball to the right player is important to think about. And, um, you know, Brooksy, Brooksy and Adam, I think, will work really well together. They've played together. So at training, when they've been training together... Uh, we look very comfortable with what we're doing. Uh, give a bit of credit to to Jake Simkin, who's really started the season very, mm. very well, which gives us a, another good option at uh, at hooker, and he's played to, trained at halfback as well for us. So, um, you know, but Appy Appy's certainly in a class of his own at this stage, and uh, I think Penrith will certainly miss him, but uh, we're we're quite happy to have him, and of course the, the service. Uh, the threat that he, he brings to the game and the service that he delivers makes it a lot easier mm. off a good forward pack as well as makes it easier for the halves. I bet you were impressed with what Jake did against mm. uh, against Canberra at Belmore. He, he was really good. And, and the young the youngsters you talk of too at the back end of that match, they were just throwing the pill around and enjoying their mm. football. I mean, yeah. I've heard, I heard some of the commentators calling them the Canterbury entertainers at some stage, but it, yeah. was, it was lovely to see. Yeah, yeah, well, there's a balance there about some of them went on the ground as well, but we got away mm. with a few. But, um, no, we're encouraging them to play football, that's it. And uh, it's the environment's not threatening. Um, and it's very important, I think, as a coach to keep that environment where they're happy to come and talk to you about their game. Even if they're dropped, they're not, they're not panicking next time they come back into the side or, or whatever about th- because – you know, uh, we're not going to bite their heads off because they try something. As long as they're practising it, which we are, offloads and, and, you know, shifting the ball is something we do a lot of. So I'm encouraging them to do it. In fact, I get more disappointed when they don't, mm. to be quite honest. And Benji's the same, and Rob. Absolutely. Just on the captaincy, so um, with Appy, can you t- tell us what went into that decision how, and how, how you arrived at that decision? Uh, the decision is always the playing group, in my opinion. Uh, coaches had a say, obviously... Administration, you know, if he's the wrong type of person, they'll have a say, but if he's the wrong type of person, then he shouldn't be in the club in the first place. No, the players make the decision and uh, they voted uh, for him and uh, he was comfortably the winner of that. But there were three others, three or four others that voted also and unofficially that's our leadership group. I'm not making it an official thing. Um, There's a captain Generally, on-field captains are your spine anyway. Your halfback, your five-eight, you know, your one, your nine, all of them. And as a nine, he obviously is a captain. But if he's not on the field uh, for eighty minutes, then um, obviously other people will be appointed to take take up the slack there. But usually, it's your pivots, your halves do that. Let's talk about Benji. Um, I think you've tongue in cheek already said you're only an interim coach. Um, he takes over uh, in in a couple of years. Yeah. From what you've seen from him working with you in this yeah. preseason. Has he got it? Certainly at this stage, I'm very, very impressed with him. Um, and the staff in general, actually, are, are doing a great job. They're all working well together. Um, yeah, I am an interim coach. My job, my job right from the start was to groom the the boys, right, and particularly Benji, who's anointed as the 
ongoing three-year coach after me. So our system works that um, I push him to do whatever he wants to do. Um, I'll pull back when I think I need to add something or do whatever, but he's been running with it really well, organising the sessions really well, running, actually running in the sessions at times when Brooksy's not been running. He's actually put himself into training. But he's enjoying it, um, whereas I'm doing a lot of behind-the-scenes work as well, which he doesn't do at the moment, which he's going to have to do, the political part of the game and the lunches and various other things that you've got to handle the media and so on. But uh, he's just enjoying coaching at the moment, so... um, I've got no doubt that in two years' time uh, he'll handle it well. Everyone's on a two-year deal, so he gets clear air in two years' time with his coaching staff. Uh, and most of the players, uh, well, there's no players in the club at the moment that he doesn't want. Or every player that we buy has his stamp on it as well, particularly if they go into his his era as such. So there's not going to be that huge turnover of staff. It's up to him about what he does there, money-wise. The club's not going to have to pay anyone out. Same with players. Um, he, they're all his players, so there's not going to be a, a you know, a, a, t- a tipping out of a whole heap of players because, you know, they're not my players, that sort of thing, which coaches tend to say. Mm. Um, so as a five-year plan, I think it's a good plan. I think it'll, it'll work well. And so far I'm super impressed with the way he and Robbie have handled it. Uh, David, of course, is a professional, uh, you know, uh, defensive coach, worked with me, played under me at Canberra, but worked with me in the World Cup in 13 and so on as the defensive coordinator. A lot of confidence in him. Certainly um, uh, Wayne Lampkin also is backup uh, coach in the State Cup and also transition coach. He coaches, takes it down through the lower grades, um, particularly the flag. So, you know, we're on a, we've got a good system happening and a good bunch of people who I think is the most important thing about any organisation is a standard of the person that works for you. What are some of the key or the most important aspects from your coaching experience and career that you, you can impart on Benji? Look, everyone's, everyone's their own person. So, you know, I don't want anyone being a clone of me or that he, he may take aspects of my... Um, my coaching with him because technically I suppose I brought him up as a kid from 17, 18 through to the, towards the back end of his career, Robbie the same. But so there's things there they're doing that we did back in, in the day. Um, but in saying that your own personality, he's a different personality to me. Um, so, and you know, I'm not trying to push anything on him other than be upfront, honest with people. Um, and at the moment he's brutally honest with people, to be quite honest, which is good. They need they don't need to be, you know, stroked. Although the odd player may need a bit of a pat on the back occasionally rather than the kick up the backside, but he handles it pretty well. Um, and as an assistant coach, uh, you know, he's doing, he's doing a really good job. So his own personality, he shouldn't change his personality. He should be who he is all his life, and I think he will be. Mm. Looking ahead to Sunday, yeah. got the Titans. I mean, it, it's going to be a full house at Leichhardt, and if there's any tickets left, make sure you snap them up. It, 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 it's also going to be your 250th game yeah, as West so Tigers coach. Yeah, um, so do, do, you, do you think mm. about those sort of milestones? No, no, uh, I don't count. And uh, those sorts of things, um, what will be will be there. Uh, you, you can't afford to be sitting back thinking, oh, that's great, and what am I going to do, and how we go, well, what am I going to say, and things like that. It's another game. It's our first game, a very important game for us to try and get away to a good start. Um, we've already been, um, you know, well and truly into the reviews on uh, on the Titans, and um, so, you know, I, I don't worry about that at all, Chris, to be quite honest. Bring it on. Hey guys, Sean Bloor here. Hope you're enjoying Behind the Raw, the official West Tigers podcast. If you haven't done so already, make sure you've got your tickets to our first game of the season against the Titans at Light Card Oval on Sunday, 5th of March. The best way to support the team is to show your stripes and become a member. So what are you waiting for? Jump on our website now and show your stripes. All right, well now we are going to take some questions from the crowd and uh, you can get involved, uh, look at all our socials and you can send us um, questions for next 
uh, week's episode, which will drop again on on the Wednesday of each week, right across the season here behind the Raw. Uh, this one, Jamie from North Mead. G'day, Tim. Uh, good luck this year. What would you say is your greatest strength as a coach? Um, good question, Jamie. Uh, yeah, it's a difficult one. I mean, that's probably for a question for other people to answer, if you know what I mean, uh, yeah. from the outside looking in rather than the inside looking out. Are you um, a tactician or a man manager? A lot. You've got to be a bit of everything. Uh, you've got to be a recruiter as well. Uh, good coaches are good recruiters. Um, tactically, you've got to know your game. Certainly, you've got to be able to pick good people to work for you. And hopefully you're a good person yourself or at least be an honest person uh, up front with the players. Um, and uh, obviously be able to work, obviously, in first grade, as a first grade coach in particular, NRL coach, you've got all the the uh, peripheral uh, stuff around coaching that you've got to work with too, you know, everything from these sorts of things, media to um, your board to your fans because you can't make everyone happy. I mean, I only pick 17 players a week. The families and wives and parents and supporters who don't think I picked the right person obviously have something to say. There's all that sort of mm -hmm. thing you've got to put up with. David from Kilcare, he asks, uh, how do you think Luke Brooks will go this year? And we've maybe already touched on this. Do you think Appy will be a big help to his game? I think so, but I think Appy just needs to worry about himself. The natural fall of the game when if Appy's playing well, taking his forward, then the halves playing on the front foot will, will dominate and he will in particular, um, uh, Brooksy, because he's got speed. He's got genuine pace. And although he's, he's in, uh, when I say closer to the end of his career than the start, this is his best football, right? At the moment, he's, he should be playing his best football. And uh, with a go-forward pack, for, uh, then I think you'll find that that speed and his, his, his ability to root a hole and do the right thing will, will be a lot better than playing uh, there are a couple of years where he hasn't had that real consistent go forward. Uh, Jane from Lilyfield, uh, Tim, are we a realistic chance of playing finals footy this year? Well, Jane, you don't start the season thinking you can't. I might as well pack up and say go home. You know, um, good answer. We went out half. You know, pre-season trials. We went from you know we lost the first game, win the second game and finished, I think, 10th or something in that area, halfway up the ladder. But, um, you know, we need to be just climbing. That's what we need to do. We need to start thinking about game by game, play by play. I mean, I, I break it down to the fundamentals and um, and then worry about it. But we certainly, as a, as a goal, we would always have uh, playing semifinals. I don't think any club in the NRL would think not semifinals. I mean, 17 teams, eight spots – you've got to give yourself a chance to, to play, even if it's the bottom end of it at eighth. But I prefer to go into the semis in the three times we have that under me is in the top four and give yourself a real chance. Um, not squeak into eighth and then go out the back door and have everyone happy about, oh, well, at least we make the, the semis. There you go, Jane. Top four is where we're, where we're headed, where we're aimed. Um, you said that, I didn't. <laughs> I did, I did say that. <laughs> Kelly D, no surname, and not sure where Kelly is from. Uh, players might wear a special pair of budgies <laughs> or abstain from a cuddle the night before a game. Um, do you have any game day rituals as a coach? Well, as a player, I used to pack my own bag. The one thing I always wanted to make sure your mouth guard, everything, you had two well, pairs of boots and it? so on. Oh, often the wife or uh, uh, whatever. Um, or the family, depending on yeah. how young you are. Yeah. But I always wanted to make sure and double-check everything that way. So probably similarly, I, I just go through a routine of making sure that I've done I've done my notes, I've done what I need to do, prepared to what I wanted to say to the players before the game, um, finalised selections and things, because it can come right up to the, the morning of the game. Where do you we have like decisions. a set time you get up or a, or you go for a swim or do you do a gym session or have you got a um, routine? No, no, not on game day. Um, generally, you know, you're up early or at least you, your brain is. You know, you, you sleep, you're trying to sleep but you can't. Uh, think about games, um, trying not to, trying to stay calm about, you know, the big game scenarios. Um, you've, got to, you've got to show the players that you're calm. Otherwise, if they see you're nervous, they're going to be nervous. Uh, last minute coaching, it's a last minute everything. You know, you're ringing your staff. 
making sure everyone's right, uh, that no one's had a cold overnight or no one's got a problem, that we've, we start as we planned, all that sort of stuff. So it's pretty much, as a player, you get the, you get the luxury of the, the coaches are doing all of that stuff for you. You just turn up with your gear. Um, but um, as a coach, you're running around sorting out all those things, the little things that, you know, get us on the field, um, right from, you know, uh, the right sort of kit to, you know, have we got a, enough of this, enough of that? Like the other day, we wanted a fan. I ne- we, ne- we didn't think about a fan for the dressing room. Like, I mean, you know, 24 players plus staff in a, in some of those dressing rooms, it's pretty ordinary. Well, given that you had given a fan the heat. at Belmore last week. So, yeah, we did. But that's because we organised. We, we I asked for one. We didn't have one. And uh, my staff got it organised. So, you know, little things like that, that's that's my main game day issue, yeah. A lot of little things, aren't there? A lot of little things, but important things. If if, if the football manager messes something mm. up, it can have a knock-on effect, right? Oh, so hell yeah. you've got yeah. a very good team yeah. working with you. All right, well, they are the questions from the crowd. And uh, don't forget, you can get involved each week here on Behind the Raw. You can just check out our socials. You can shoot through your questions and uh, we'll fire them at our guest each and every week. Hey, West Tigers members, be sure to get your hands on our special edition collector cards. All you have to do is present your members pass at the membership marquee. We'll be releasing a new card at all of our home games in Sydney. So make sure you're there to collect the whole set. Righto. Now time to get into, I think that's, there's, do you remember they used to stop the clock with five to go? Yes. Yes. Well, I think we've got about five to go. So am we're going to. Am I looking to kick a field goal here or what am I Well, doing? you can do as you please, but I'm <laughs> going to ask you uh, with five minutes left on the clock, uh, five to go, we play our five, uh, favourite five, Tim. So, right. um, yeah, a few favourite moments, people personalities, etc. No, I've got to do it within five minutes. Oh, I'll take your time. Though. Oh, we okay. can, our editor's right. very, very clever. No worries. Uh, you've coached some wonderful players, Tim, in your time. Oh, don't ask me who's the, the best you player. Champions of the game. The <laughs> likes of Mal, Laurie, Ricky, Benji. And when you only need one name to explain who they are, they're, they're greats of the game. Mm. Which player did you most enjoy working with? I know it's a tough one. No, I can't answer it, Chris. Oh. I'll tell you why, mate. Well, Who's your favourite sure child? Your favourite child on any given part of a day can be your favourite. All of those players, yeah. have, have, I've been blessed to be able to work with them. At any given moment, they've been good and I've had some you know, calls early in the morning come and get the odd one out of jail. Um, <laughs> the, yeah, <laughs> So, yeah, yeah they, were, they were drinking too much or whatever. But, you know, in real terms... Um, They've all had their moments. They've all been great players. I, 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 I've just been blessed to have some great people at rep level, at club level to work with. And sometimes it's a player that's never you'd never mention uh, that achieved mm. something in the game that you think's really special because they didn't. No one expected them to get a rep jumper or mm. get a, a premiership or something like that. Like some of the uh, 05 boys, you know that. Had, like Scando and so on, and I know he, he didn't pay me to say this, but <laughs> he and Marky O'Neill and them, the guys that have been long-term players at Balmain and Wes and didn't think, they hoped, but I don't think they ever thought they'd they'd walk away with a premiership at the, at the age they were, and they did. So, you know, those sorts of things give me as much a buzz. If you're thinking as a coach, winning is, is the thing that, that gets you up. As a pro coach, you've got to win or you get pushed out the door. But as as a coach, the the bonuses of being a coach is to see guys achieve things that through through their career, and not always be the out the in the limelight as some of those names are. As you say, yeah. Mm. If you said John, no one's going to say John Scandalis. <laughs> Mind you, if you're a Scandal, they'd probably remember who he is. But those things Chica. are the things that give me yeah. Those things are the things that give me a buzz, and mm. I can't put I can't say one name. I'm never going to say one name, mate. I'd, all right, but yes, those, right. those greats of the game that you have yeah. coached, though, it's been a joy coaching them, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah it's Hell yeah. yeah. You know, you, you've got uh, some of them I've recruited, others I've walked into the club and they were there. Um, you know, you always leave a legacy for the last coach and you get a legacy from the coach that you go in, into the club you go into. And um, in, in those cases, I've been very fortunate, let alone the rep levels, at Australia, I never played for Australia, but working with some of those guys, um, yeah, from 2009 to 2015, I think it was, 
is uh, is just outstanding. I imagine there have been players that you haven't enjoyed working with. You don't have to name names, but I imagine there were players that you didn't particularly enjoy working with. Oh, some we no? didn't. Yeah. Some didn't see eye to eye. No, yeah. that's right. But you know, uh, generally the ones that you didn't pick. You know, and obviously. For whatever reason, you didn't pick them, whether it didn't suit what you wanted to do or whatever, whatever. But so there's always there's always going to be that element of, of people that aren't happy with you. you. You can't make friends with everyone. And if you do, you're not going to be a coach. Question two then, don't wait on to question two, your favourite in favourite five. Uh, is there a player that you coached against where regardless of how well you had prepared your team that week and how well you were playing, you knew this player had the ability of spoiling your day? Oh, yeah, there's heaps of them. Um, one jump out of the oh, page. Yeah, not one particularly, but Fittler, mm-hmm. Langer, um, you know, that type of player. Um, Joey. Oh, Johns, of course, those sort of, the, the both boys, let alone um, individually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every team's got a player or two like that, every team. Um, you've always got someone that you're worried about. Yeah, you know, Eddinghausen at his best, um, you know, Benny Elias, Gary Jack, you know, the, the key the key spots. Um, you know, so, some of the big, uh, classy outside backs that have played. I, Mick Cronin, when I coached against him and people like that. I mean, the Parramatta back line was an Australian back line. So you're you were, you were worried about more than just one player. But in real terms, um, there's always someone. And you, you never stop them, but you, you try to limit what, they, what opportunity they get. That's all you can do with some players. I mean... There's, some of them are just, again, as you say, for when you call a name, Freddie or something, you know who he is. Those sorts of players are, are going to get some results in a game no matter what. It's just that you don't want them to get too many of those those opportunities. Well, th- this sort of rolls into the next question as well. And, Tim, if I can, you know, with all due respect, I don't want you playing the card. I can't because, you know, who's your favourite child? Right? I need an answer on this one, OK? <laughs> and it doesn't have to be someone you've coached, all right? Mm-hmm. Tim Sheens, who is the greatest player you have seen in your time? Mm, uh, Take your time. Well, it's a question that's hard to answer for this reason. You've got front row to fullback; they're all different, right? You're finding a way out. You're all uh, they're all different. I mean, you want to go through every position and then say who's the best, this and that, but. Everyone's different, and over periods of time, um, you think no one will ever replace Peter Sterling, and along comes Joey Johns, and then no one will ever replace Joey Johns, along comes, um, you know, uh, Jonathan. Jonathan Thurston, mm-hmm. exactly, or Cooper Cronk, and 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 then you can't replace them, and then comes the next generation. Let you know? me so rephrase the question then. Too. They, the game's yeah. different too, by the way, from the time I coached, from the early days to now as well. So. Um, there are so many that it's just it's ridiculous for me to even try and put one. Plus, I'm not going to get 50 phone calls from the other guys okay, okay. Uh, who say, "What are you, what are you do, doing, Sheens?" You know, so, well, no, well, we are. So, well, so, they're so, all they're all going to yeah. be listening to behind the raw. That is, for, yeah. what if I rephrase it this way? Which player in your time had the greatest influence on the outcome of a match? <laughs> Chris, what are you doing? There's. Okay. There's a million things that you say. Jonathan Thurston's goal kicking, you know. Um, okay. Uh, how many times did he win a game with with great kicks, let alone his his general game? Um, you know, other players like Coop, Coops with his with his now Scotty Prince, you know, in our grand final, you know, taking the Clive Churchill medal. David Ferner, who works for me, oh, took, it, get you, took it as well in '94. So, you know. You're never going to get it out of me, mate. There's that many great players that I've Ricky, Jonathan, Joey, or Alf. Uh, Ricky, Jonathan, Joey, Alf. Oh, I'd take all four. <laughs> right, we're not, we're not getting anywhere. No, you're not, mate. No. You're not. You're not okay, get... <laughs> Jim, we're still in your favourite five. We've got two yeah. more to go. Okay. Uh, your fondest moment in the game. So, I mean, tell us how the feelings of 2005 were. Mm. Um, say different to your premierships first, with Canberra. First are always... A, a big thing like 05 for us, uh, 89 for Canberra. But the the one that the one that sticks in my mind is making the semi-finals at Penrith, 985. Um, we did it by having to play an extra game against Manly on the Saturday and beat a hot Manly side in extra time, right? In extra time, ten minutes each way, 
uh, to make the very first semi-final Penrith had ever made. Um, top five, obviously, in those days. Um, from the mid-60s to, to, to 85 is a long time not making a semi-final. And I played in the 70s. Uh, we copped a hammer and I had 13 first-grade coaches in – sorry, eight first-grade coaches in 13 years. Um, so it, was, it wasn't a great year. We were the chocolate soldiers. So to be involved with Penrith as a Penrith player slash, you know, you know family grew up there in, mm. in that area. My grandfather played for Penrith in the 20s. So, you know, that to me was probably – and I was only – it was in my second year of coaching, so that was pretty special. Four playing forward? I was a back, but uh, they they stuck me in the Slowed forwards. Slowed up a bit, did you? That's <laughs> I was I was never fast enough when I went to grade. I did the same to David Ferner. He still reminds me, but I said they did that to me, David. So mm. I played backs all my career and then ended up in the forwards. Yeah. Righto. Final question, Tim. In your favourite five, aside from your four premierships as a coach, can you give us an achievement of yours that you are most proud of, or could it still be to come? Well, you never know that, uh, do you? So uh, hopefully it's still to come. Um, I, I thought the World Cup of 13 uh, and the way the guys went, you know, stuck together, we, were, we weren't we were favourites, even though everyone says Australia were. The, the Kiwis were World Club, uh, world Champions for five years. I think 08 they won it. So 13 was a five-year stint between World Cups. And with that side and not having a try scored against us after round one um, against a Sonny Bill-led Kiwi mm. side in the final, uh, I think was that that series of games I think I'd have to put down as one of the f- you know, my favourite times in the, in, in the game. Uh, they're a special bunch. In fact, it's 10 years this year, 2023. I'm 13, so... I like to hope we get together this year, those boys, a few of those boys, and have have a get together again because I back that Australian side to be as good as any I've seen. Tim, been a pleasure, mate. Thanks very much for jumping in and, and having a chat to us on on behind the raw. All the best on Sunday and and for uh, the rest of the season. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. We'll do it all again next week, same place, same time. Until then, show your stripes. Behind the raw, the official podcast of West Tigers.